Limerick Today on Limerick's Live 95 FM with the Irish Daily Mail, Ireland's best value family newspaper. Now, members of Ungada Siakona meet all human life on our streets every day. Former Garda and current journalist Niall O'Connor is with me on the line. He's going to give us some insight into his experiences of patrolling the streets of Limerick in uniform. Uh, good morning to you, Niall. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? Not too bad. Now, you've had an interesting career path because you went from journalism to the Gardaí and now you've gone back to journalism in very recent times. I have, yeah. Just uh, two weeks ago I left uh, Limerick. I was stationed in uh, Henry Street Garda Station. Why did you want to be a Garda in the first place? Well, it's like any other person. You become uh, interested in a job when you're quite young. Um, but I was working as a, a kind of a crime correspondent um, for a good many years, and um, I just became impressed by the guards and the way they operated. Um, and uh, I opted to join in 2005. How long then, in total, were you based in Limerick? I was um, in Limerick for four years. I came in, to Limerick in 2008. And um, I worked in Mayerstone Garda Station for a year, and I then moved into Henry Street Garda Station for the last three years. You've written a very interesting piece for the Sunday World, and you mention in it that certain Gardaí are referred to as mules by their own colleagues within the force. Uh, to whom do you refer? Uh, mules are uh, uniform Gardaí. It's their nickname. Every kind of area in the Guards um, has a nickname. It's a um, there's a kind of a, uh, there's a a, a culture uh, in the guards, a separate culture. They almost even have their own language at times. But a mule is the uniform guard that does all the work. He's the man that does the men or woman that does the everything from control room duty to public office duty to dealing with prisoners to out on the street on the beat or in the patrol car. Does that category of guard resent being called a mule? No, it's taken as a compliment, and it's um, it's uh, they see it as a as a badge of honour to be a mule. Seriously. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, it, I can't, you know, there's a subculture there. It's uh, I suppose it's the same as, as journalists like to be called hacks. It's the it's the same uh, same idea. Now you call Limerick one of Ireland's busiest and most dangerous Garda districts. It's also one of Ireland's most underfunded, but that's I suppose a story that we need to expose, you know, and we need to talk about. Um, it certainly is one of the busiest and one of the most dangerous. And that comes from your direct experience. Absolutely, sure. I was a guard in Limerick for four years, so I'd have a fair idea of it, you know. And from talking to other colleagues uh, around Ireland, they too would see Limerick as one of the most dangerous guard districts. Well, Limerick has a has a, has a reputation, um, not entirely well-founded. Let me say from the outset here that there are some very, very decent people in Limerick City who live very good lives. In fact, I would say that there's a a kind of a silent majority, majority here in in Limerick City that uh, that are decent people who try their best to um, to live their lives as, within the law, but there is this uh, cohort of criminality in Limerick City that's causing untold uh, difficulties for for uh, its citizens. Tell me about being attacked by a man with a sword in Limerick. Um, yes, it happened uh, happened in the Robog area. Um, it was a, a domestic uh, incident um, at about half half four in the morning. Um, it was, there was ongoing issues in the in the family. Um, I, uh, I I responded to a call in a, a get yet another call. I suppose we'd done maybe ten or eleven uh, calls in re, in the weeks leading up to it, and we responded. It was half four in the morning. Um, I walked in the front door, um, and um, I was approached by the woman in the house who said that she'd been attacked by this this person who was her partner. Um, he uh, he walked past me. She also told me that he had threatened to kill his kids. Uh, he walked up, he walked past me, and I I called out to him. Um, I called him his first name. I won't say it here because I don't want to draw attention. Uh, don't want to identify him. But he walked onto the stairs and went to walk upstairs, and I followed him. And I called out to him again, and I said, "Look, will you talk to me?" And uh, he turned around and he plunged a sword at me, which just glanced past my head. Um, um, I drew my pepper spray and uh, he fled upstairs and barricaded himself in a room. How was it resolved? We um, we negotiated with him, but in the end we had to break down the door and go in and we arrested him. And He was prosecuted in, um, in Limerick District Court, but only received uh, a nine-month suspended sentence because he, he basically convinced the judge that he had a drink problem and uh, it was the drink that made him do it. 
Live 95 FM News covered that story actually at uh, the time. How did the incident affect you and his punishment? Well, the incident was just another incident. Um, I'll be painfully honest. I in, I walked away from many incidents like that, and I was just so used to it that it didn't really matter to me. I just dealt with it, and that was the story, and I moved on. Um, but to be honest with you, the frustration that I felt afterwards when I heard that he only got a nine-month suspended sentence, um, I thought was an absolute absurdity and a great insult to the guards who do the work. And on the other side of it, the the, the person, that man's partner, didn't want to make uh, an allegation because... Um, um, for whatever reason, the profile of domestic violence victims dictates that they very rarely will make a complaint against the, the aggressor. Um, their 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 mindset is clouded by not alone, um, I suppose, that they love the person, but also by the fact that the person uh, will have a very controlling effect over them, um, and they don't they don't want to upset them anymore. Are you saying that you didn't feel any sense of delayed shock by that experience? Um, I was <laughs> at the end of the call. Um, I suppose when everything was done and dusted and I was driving back to the station um, I, I I probably did say to myself geez that was lucky you know but um, no what, what people need to realise is that in, particularly particularly in a busy station you get very used you get very used to the chaos and you get very used to the sort of stuff that's going on um, and it doesn't um, a guard that really doesn't get that badly affected by it um, you do get up like you get you get you do get shocked, but it only happens after the call because in the in the process of doing the call, you're just thinking of resolving the call. Now, in the article in the Sunday World, you say, I stared down and hassled drug kingpins and crime lords, pathetic men who ordered the killings of innocent men, such as Shane Gagan and Roy Collins. Often they told me they would kill my family, rape any girlfriend I had and burn down my house. Yeah, that's a regular thing. Um, there's criminals in Limerick City know today who are going to do that to guards and they're going to treat guards like that um, and Limerick just keeps going on tr- struggles on with these people and uh, does nothing to resolve the matter um, Gardaí are dealing with that now as we speak um, an awful lot of like there has been very high profile arrests made um, in terms of the, the, the gangland stuff um, both in the St Mary's Park area the My Ross um, and the Belnacurra Western area um, but there's a vacuum to be filled, so then that vacuum gets filled. But that's that's um, that is Limerick's major major problem. That these people are acting were up until recently acting with impunity, um, in the and you know ordering the killings of innocent men like Shane Gagan and uh, and Ray Collins. Um, uh, this was going on wholesale. Um, for whatever reason, they they picked Limerick to cause this this problem. But it wasn't only people from outside that came in. Um, but it, there was also Limerick residents who ter- who have turned to crime in a very organised way. You also say in the article, I caught drug dealers and thieves wrestled with a junkie in the seconds after he attacked an 80-year-old great-grandmother outside a shoe shop on a throng street. It happened on O'Connell Street there. Um, I think it was about a year ago. A woman in her 80s inside shopping for shoes and uh, as she walked out, this junkie approached her and... Uh, attacked her and tried to take her bag off her. Um, we were very close by myself and another guard and uh, we were on the beat and uh, the call went up on the radio and we ran up and uh, there, this, we, we met the, the man that did it. Um, he was still at the scene. Uh, members of the public were trying to take him on. In fairness to Limerick people, they're very brave people at times and they tried their best to try and stop this fellow before he could get away um, and it just gave us enough time to be able to get into the area to, to, uh, to arrest him. What would you say to Limerick listeners, probably uncomfortable hearing some of the stories that you're telling about their native place this morning? I can understand. Look, I'm, I'm from Cork and I suppose if people were given out about Cork in the way that they give out about Limerick, um, I'd, be, I'd be annoyed and I'd be distressed. But Limerick people need to wake up to the scenario that they're living in a difficult city um, where society is in, is in uh, a lot of danger. Um, I will reiterate again, there are very, very decent people in Limerick City who have, who help the guards with, with their work um, and try to make things better. But Niall, I will say now that in the article you wrote in the Sunday World, I don't see that particular point made. You've made it twice to me this morning. I think it's important that it is made. Yeah, but you're yeah, making yeah. it now here, yeah. but you didn't make it in the Sunday World article. Well, I, I'm saying it here now to you. What I'll say to you here is that the Sunday World article is about Garda Cuts and how it has affected people. 
It's not about Limerick City. Ah, come um, on now, Niall. I read it. And, it, I mean, it, it features Limerick City very prominently throughout the article. Which, of course, it features Limerick City. Sure, I was stationed in Limerick City. I mean, the uh, I was talking about a broader issue. We're talking about Limerick now. Well, now, the first paragraph of it says, I dodged a sword attack from a crazed drunk father who threatened to kill his children. I ran into a burning building to try and save a trapped teenager from the deadly fa- flames that threatened her life, while another uh, occupant lie dying, impaled on the railings outside. And there are another couple of paragraphs um, and then you explain that all of that happened in Limerick. So, you know, it it is about Limerick and it's also about the other issue, which we will come to in in a second, which is the the funding issue uh, for Gardaí. I mean, for example, you say that you were stopped from investigating certain crimes at the end of your shift because a superintendent wouldn't sanction overtime. That's correct. And that happens regularly. Um, There is a new regime that um, the guards um, are basically penny-pinching on things. Um, what happens is that you, you can arrest someone at the, towards the end of your shift, you bring them back to the station, um, and then your, your, your overtime isn't sanctioned. So what happens then is that, more often than not, um, arrangements will be made for someone else to try and interview them. But as a guard, you want to follow the case right through to the end because it's your, you feel it is your duty. But that duty is suspended now because... Um, of penny pinching. That must have driven you around the twist. Uh, it just made me incredibly frustrated. Um, it came to the point where, I mean, it's one of the main, just the whole issue with the funding made me think about whether or not I wanted to be a guard anymore and ultimately it, it, it caused me to leave. This is a fascinating conversation. We're going to hold you over the break. Uh, if uh, you have a view on it, do let us know. 53095 for 20 cent or you can call us directly on 461995 and we'll be back with former guard and Lyle O'Connor in a moment. Follow Live 95 FM on Facebook. Check out live95fm.ie Limerick Today on Limerick's Live 95 FM with the Irish Daily Mail, Ireland's best value family newspaper. I'm talking to former Garda Niall O'Connor very recently, uh, having left the force and he served here in Limerick and he wrote a piece for the Sunday World, which was fascinating uh, about Limerick and about Garda resources. Now, you say in the article, um, Niall, that you chased criminals in what you describe as the brutal failed housing projects of Limerick. Absolutely. Um, As we all know, there's uh, areas in Limerick City that are... um, extremely disadvantaged um, and I worked in both uh, Mearsnow Garda Station and uh, Henry Street um, and um, I suppose when I arrived down first there was in 2007 um, I, I was stationed in Mearsnow so I was dealing specifically with uh, my Ross I was a community guard of my Ross um, and um, at that time there there was a lot of uh, criminality happening in these areas and, and uh, the guards were being sent in there and off the back of the Fitzgerald report to uh, try and uh, change it and try to make it a, a cleaner and uh, and uh, and better place for the for the good people that live in that area, um, and my job was to go in and uh, interact with the the young fellas mostly that were causing the bother down there. From your personal experience, did regeneration make a difference over the years you were here? I'm going to be painfully honest on this, and people aren't going to like what I'm going to say, but I don't think regeneration has any effect. I think what's happened is is that they've just moved the problem somewhere else. In what way? Well, there's a housing policy that has moved bad families out into good areas. And what's happened now is that the bad pro- that the problems have followed them. In some way, there was a theory, some sort of sociological theory, that by moving, pe- by moving bad families into good areas, that, that the good people would rub off on them. But they'll just continue their feral ways, like it's not going to change. Um, and I think it's a cop-out on, on the part of the regeneration to think that that was going to help. But you'll be aware that 116 million euro has been spent so far on regeneration and many claims of a positive kind have been made for it. They can make whatever claim they want. Limerick City is a failed society. It's that simple. And people can say that I'm lying and I'm being sensationalist. I'm not. I was the guard sitting in the patrol car to go to the calls. I know exactly what the way Limerick is. Limerick City is a failed society? Absolutely. We have... There's areas... People have been ghettoised from a very early age. Um, what's happened is, is that there's a culture then of criminality in an area. It, all, it becomes completely persuasive. There's criminal gangs operating in areas. Um, uh, put it this way to you, for instance, 
car crime in Limerick City is matched only by the whole of the DMR regional area in Dublin, which means that the, that a million people are the only people that can beat Limerick for car crime. Like that's not acceptable. Are you saying then that everyone listening to this, everyone living in Limerick, needs to face the reality in your view that we are living in a failed society here? What's happening is, is that people are trying to make Limerick better, and they, you know, fair play to them. But the reality is, is that you need to you need to understand from the past and the present before you think about the future. And what they need to realise is that there are Limerick is a town governed by great difficulties. In other words, what I'm saying is that there's a massive heroin problem, a huge heroin problem. Um, there is a massive antisocial behaviour problem in areas. Um, I came under attack on many nights when I went to deal with with groups of youths. Um, we became we we were we were stoned. We were bottled. Um, we were attacked. Gardaí were, were were assaulted at these calls. There's a massive problem with criminal with criminality. There's a huge burglary problem. Um, and Limerick people need to wake up to this and need to see that this is the scenario in their tone. Is your view shared privately by many Gardaí operating in Limerick? Every single guard in Limerick City and County believes what I believe. Because the reality is is that you can constantly try and tell your, yourself that things are okay. But when you keep seeing that they're not okay, then you have to say to yourself they're not okay. So every single Garda in Limerick believes that they are policing a failed society? They're policing a, a society that uh, is, is in great difficulty. Well, no, that's not what you said earlier, no. You well, said I'm it was saying, a failed society. I'm you said twice it was a failed society. Well, it is a failed society, as far as I'm concerned. So they're policing a failed society. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that every guard in Limerick City uh, believes what I believe. I'm saying that they that they that they look at it in the same well, way. Well, you did say that now because I specifically asked you, and you said yes, every guard in Limerick believes that. Well, as far as I'm concerned, any time I sat in a patrol car, that's exactly what we felt. How difficult then is it for them to do their jobs if they feel that way inside? You just can You just have to do the job. That's it. Um, the job has to be done, uh, regardless of the funding and regardless of the cutbacks. Um, as we speak now, there's guards going around in patrol cars in Limerick City taking calls, going to whatever they have to deal with. Um, for instance, you were you were saying there there was some taxi driver who was attacked in an area in Limerick there in the last in the last day or so. Well, the guards went to that call. They dealt with it. And they're investigating it, um, and that'll be investigated regardless of whether there's cuts or not. Or regardless of whether the guards are exhausted from the amount of uh, the amount of uh, the amount of calls they have to do, but surely if motivation is as low as you're suggesting, um, things will inevitably slip through the cracks. They have to. Um, I will say this to you that guards' morale is at, uh, members of a guard Shikana's morale is at such a low level that they're going to calls and they're losing interest in doing their job because. They're they're going home. They're looking at their their pay packet at the end of the week, um, and they're also looking at the resources that that they have in Limerick City and and in, in other areas right across the country. This isn't just a Limerick problem. And what's happening is is that they're thinking, what's the point? Yeah, um, the justice system and the courts and how they deal with uh, issues and when um, individuals are processed and brought before the courts. How do Gardaí and Limerick feel about all of that? I think um, the justice system is partly to blame for Limerick's problems. I think for far too long, um, Limerick's criminals have been uh, given leeway in the court system. Um, I also believe that, and I, this is what I've seen, that solicitors in Limerick City aren't helping the matter either. Um, there are there are solicitors in Limerick City that are um, that are that are abusing the system and abusing the ab- abusing their position as solicitors on the basis that, for instance, there was one solicitor that's been documented was passing information to criminal gangs whilst he was inside in interview rooms. That's not acceptable. And that person is still working in Limerick City. What about the temporary release system? That's another absolute joke of a thing. Um, you go into Henry Street on any given day to get a, a, a farm stamped and you stand at the public office counter, there will be members of the criminal fraternity in Limerick City walking in there to sign on in temporary release. They'll walk out of the station and they will head downtown and then they'll start their day's work, which is basically committing crime. And that crime could be anything from the huge amount of burglaries that happen in the city, car crime, um, public, public order, thefts, uh, any, any, any number of offences. 
and they are all on temporary release, and they're on temporary release because the the, the prisons are full to the brim, and they can't uh, they can't uh, they can't do anything about it. They can't do anything to keep them in. Um, there was a, a number of years ago. What happened was there was a, there was an argument between the government and the prison service, um, and uh, Michael McDowell closed prisons. And by that, then that created huge problems of overcrowding in in, uh, in Irish prisons. Is there a lot of dole and social welfare fraud here? The, it's it's all persuasive. It's just it's it's a constant problem. Um, there are unemployed people in Limerick City who uh, deserve to get the dole because they have no other option. But there is a major major problem, particularly in the degener- in the areas that are are suffering um, serious problems. Where people see it as 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 that they're that they're uh, taking on the state by uh, by claiming the dole um, and claiming disability allowances um, when in fact there's absolutely nothing wrong with them and nothing wrong with them nothing stopping them working either for that matter. How do you feel the current justice minister Alan Shatter is doing? I think he's left down the guards to a point where he is uh, as much to blame as anyone else for what's going on. Um, it's not just a Fine Gael um, Labour government issue. This has been going on for years. This this rot has set in many, many years ago when Fianna Fáil were working as well. This isn't just an Alan Shatter issue, but he doesn't help the matter by standing up for the Garda Representative Association and telling the guards that morale is high. Morale is not high. Morale is at an absolute rock bottom in the guards. A uh, texter says, um, is Niall afraid of a backlash now that he's given inside info? I'm not afraid because I, I've, made the, I've made the choice to stand up and say what, what needs to be said. Um, I'd imagine there probably is going to be a backlash. Um, but I would say that um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm blowing the whistle on what's going on. Um, and someone needs to do it because what's going to happen is that uh, Angarda Sheikh Khan is going to come to a point where it, 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 it will collapse. Fair play to that Garda for speaking up, or that former Garda now. I've seen guys arrested and let out within an hour laughing about it. Uh, Joe, you might ask the Garda about warrants for arrest for outstanding fines, no tax, etc. Um, James from Abbey Field says, I'm quite annoyed listening to this piece. He made reference to Cork. Could you ask him, do these things happen in Cork? They do not to the same level. There's incidents in Cork, I suppose, but, you know, we've, We've seen stabbings recently in Cork and whatever, but no, not to the same level. Another one-sided version of our city. What is this man's point of uh, telling the country these stories? I'll tell you why he's doing it. Money, Joe. This happens all over Ireland. Money. <laughs> this is the truth. That caller needs to wake up to the scenario what's going on in his own city. He can stick his head in the sand like some sort of an ostrich. The truth of the matter is, is that this is happening in Limerick City. He can deny it all he wants. The reality is there. Another texter says, here we go again, Joe, Limerick in the limelight again, and this time by an ex-Garda, uh, whom I think has a hidden agenda. Uh, crime is happening all over, uh, but like the Dublin regime, Limerick is the scapegoat yet again. I don't agree with that. That's, that's just... Um, uh, oh, Joe, oh. as a guard, he knew it wasn't going to be a cushy job. Uh, in the Sunday world, he painted a bad picture of Limerick. How can he say that? He knows from experience it's the most dangerous city. Sure, he wasn't stationed in any other city. Anne says, every word that man is saying is the truth. It's about time officials woke up to it. The problem has been spread all over Limerick and the council has turned a blind eye. Uh, A Garda stationed in Tipperary uh, tell Joe that article is not about Limerick. Those calls happen in all districts. Uh, Joe would want to stop saying Niall is attacking Limerick. Fair play to Niall. He says what all Gardaí are no, no, I asked questions and I stand over asking questions. I'm sure Niall doesn't mind it as a journalist either. He's well able for it. Joe, Limerick people would want to wake up. It's gone desperate. I mean, it's gone to the stage where you can't leave your front door open because of young fellas coming in for drugs. They're not from the area, so I'd be wary of them. Uh, they're probably fine young men until they take the drugs. They change their whole way of thinking. That guard is telling the truth. Pity there aren't more like him. He's saying uh, what I would love to have the nerve to say. Fair play to him, says a listener from St. Mary's Park. Uh, Niall is right about regeneration. All the trouble is moved out to the county areas. I agree with him, says Catherine. 
I would agree with Niall. Uh, the uh, problem has moved to other housing estates. Um, and uh, somebody is asking, why didn't he address the problem internally uh, and not in the Sunday world? Shame on him. Uh, a caller says, I agree with everything Niall is saying. Regeneration is a joke. They've built a monstrosity in Moy Ross. They're moving the people who are causing the trouble into good estates. Niall is telling the truth. Uh, and a caller says, every single word Niall is saying is true. Limerick is rotten with criminality. Uh, Niall, will you go further? Will you write a, a book about your experiences? Um, I will certainly go as far as I need to go to get this story across. And um, if that if that means a book needs to be written, then I'll write a book. Um, people deserve to know what's going on. Um, this is their police force, you know, and this is their this is their their society that they're living in. They deserve to have a proper police force that's fully that's fully funded and properly funded and supported by the management in Angarda Shiakana. And at the moment, that's not happening. And you make one other point, which I think is an interesting one in the article. You say, Gardi deal with things the rest of us never want to see. Absolutely. Uh, it's a constant... Um, for instance, the, the the unit that's working now came on at 7am this morning. And by 5 past 7, I can tell you they were dealing with calls. And uh, they, you go f- to things that no human being ever, ever wants to see. Um, if you saw it in a film, it would get an 18 script sort. And in fact, at times it would it would be deleted out of it. Um, I've seen absolutely horrific things. I've seen horrible assaults. I've seen murders. I've seen uh, families trapped in houses at house fires. Um, I've seen I've seen two people impaled on railings outside houses in Limerick City um, because they came out of a, a top window. And uh, you know, there, you see horrific things as a police officer. You accept that that's your job, and you have to go and see these things. But what I'm, the point I'm trying to make in relation to that is that while while guards accept that they have to go to these calls, they need to be treated with the respect that they deserve because they're the only ones that are willing to go to those calls. Niall O'Connor, thank you very much for your service in on Garda Shiakana and we wish you the best uh, in your uh, renewed journalism career. Thank you, uh, John. Limerick Today on Limerick's Live 95 FM with the Irish Daily Mail, Ireland's best value family newspaper.